You ever have a Tumblr? Yeah. Are you talking about like the drink or like a Tumblr account? Not the Tumblr account. I've had both. Like like the shaker thing or like a... Like the drink. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, like that's a tumbler. Oh yeah, a tumbler for a drink. I thought you were saying there's a drink called the tumbler, but this, a drink tumbler. This is the tumbler. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. Have you had one of these? Yeah, Corksicle does a great one. Who? Corksicle. I don't like that. It's a wine-based <laughs> tumbler. Yeah, see, so. and, but I, and I, I could tell it. it was worldly from the moment you said it. <laughs> from the moment you said it, I could tell. Nope, not of God. Hmm. Wine corkscrew, worldly spirit. Shark Tank brand. Compromise. Is yeah. It? yeah. Yeah. Shark Tank, not Spirit Tank. <laughs> okay, I got to be honest. This morning, I got up very early, uh, 21 days prayer fasting, mm-hmm. and I used this tumbler that I just despise. <laughs> like the, I don't like the, the marketing. I, yeah, the, yeah, 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 the yeah. brand. You know, you got to love your tumbler. Totally. So here I am walking in and I'm just like, nobody knows what this brand is. No. It's an internal process. I asked like, what is that? Yeah. But, but now this tumbler, hmm. I would give my life for this tumbler. Now this tumbler, I came home with a twin. It has a matching twin mm. and I can't find it. And I got to be honest. Separated. I think about it constantly. Is it the wife? It's totally the wife. Mm. I told her when we received these, these are my favorite cups I've ever had. <laughs> And I'm obsessed. I, it's naturally good from Montauk. You know, I'm a Montauk guy, New yeah. York. You know, I ran into Dave Portnoy. I've already mentioned that. Oh, yeah. But I could give, I could, I would pay $100 for this cup. How much would you pay for a leadership lean-in tumbler? <gasps> Whoa. This was not, I didn't see this going there, but <laughs> that, I'm tracking. That's a great idea. I'm picking up what you're putting Let's down, go. mister. But I'm just saying right now, this morning, the, the disdain I felt with the wrong tumbler. The, the the feeling of regret. Mm. You know, it's 5.15 in the morning. Yeah. I, I've got my coffee ready. It's hot. I go through my cabinet. And I've got to pull, pull out Mr. Nasty Pants here. <laughs> Mr. Corkscrew from the, from the Shark Tanks. I don't, want any, I don't want any part of it. None. But then I come to the office and I see that Old Faithful was left. Hello. Left behind like a Kirk Douglas movie. <laughs> Kirk the Kirk Cameron, Kirk, Kirk, <laughs> Kirk Douglas, Kirk, Kirk Douglas Cameron Peter. movie. Yeah, yeah. But there's this thing I'm holding. Now I've had many blue bottle mm. yeah. tumblers, yeah. but they're famous for it. But every time a relative comes into town, they take my uh, blue bottle tumblers. There's two in the thinking, cupboard here. They're mine. I guarantee they're mine. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm claiming them right now. But this tumbler right here, you can't be a leader until you got a good tumbler. <laughs> Oh, what's going on, leaners? Leaner Nation. We're leaning into leadership. Like, Jed, don't ever start. No, we, that. no we, we, need, we, <laughs> need a new, we need a new intro song. Uh, maybe I'll write a little jingle. I was leaning the wrong way. Hey, send us your and, jingles. Until if you I leaned in into God's way or, <laughs> the, or to John's way. The leadership wow. way. I yes. leaned into John Maxwell. And then he pushed me away. <laughs> Everything rises and falls on leadership. Oh, what's going on, leaders? We're having way too much fun here uh, recording in our, our uh, stew. The stew. The, uh, the LLI studios. If you're part of our, <laughs> our nation LLC. out there, maybe you're in the car right now. Maybe you're, you know, we got some people watching as a group. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. shout out to everybody on the YT. That's YouTube. Make some room. Mr. Beast, we're coming for you. Like, what? Whoa. You've got 4,000 oh subscribers, bro. You better <laughs> calm down. Go sip your tumbler. Um, <laughs> we are excited. We are. Um, we just announced today, Leadership Lean In, the next live event coming to you mm. specifically in the month of February. You'll be up on February 2nd. We are doing Zoe Conference mm. February 1st through the 3rd. Right here in Los Angeles, California. I'm telling you, you got to get out of Ohio. You got to leave Pennsylvania. You better get away from uh, Jackson Hole Mm. and make your way down yonder to sunny Southern California. That's right, my friends. Hillary is gone. It is sunny Southern (laughs) California. In the month of February, you do not want to be stuck in, uh, you know, Tucson. You don't want to be in Tucson. Other, Tucson. Yeah, other side. Denver, yeah. Denver even. Oh, yeah, yeah. Denver this yeah, time Oakland. of year? 
That John Denver. Uh, you know, so come to Los Angeles. We've got an amazing lineup of phenomenal leaders. A, a former leadership leaning guest himself, Jensen Franklin. Oh, yeah. One of the best lean in episodes in the history of the pod. It's my personal mm. favorite. And I got to be honest, if you've never listened to this one, you got to go back. Jensen Franklin's going to be there. A uh, 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 leadership leaning constant. Rich Wilkerson Jr. will be there. Yep. Uh, Naomi Rain is going to be there. Oh. And many other guests. Uh, my wife Julia will be there. It's gonna be sensational, and will not be the same without you. If you're a group, we we got a twenty percent off for you Great. until Monday morning. If you're an individual, twenty percent off. Get your ticket price. We're gonna be doing a live leadership lean in there. So, get your tickets, and maybe, maybe, just maybe, I don't promise things that I cannot deliver. So it's a big maybe. Maybe we'll have a tumbler. Maybe by then we can find a way to make a Tumblr happen. Okay, wow. let's jump into today. The title of today's episode is called Who Matters? Hmm. And I'm not asking you the question like, you know, who out there really matters? <laughs> I want to convince you today that it's all about who. As you're leading, it's all about your team. It's all about your crew. It's all about your people, your tribe, who you're doing life with. Remember, I don't just build what we're working on with these people. I'm also doing life That's right. with these people. Mm-hmm. We're doing life together. We're building the the team, the church, the organization, the business. The if you're an entrepreneur, whatever you're building, we're we, it's all about who's with you. And I love this because um, Jim Collins wrote a book years ago called "Good to Great," yep. and he says it doesn't matter where the bus is going. As much as it matters as who's on the bus, right. yeah. it's who over what, who you are doing life with and who you are building your future with matters more than what you're doing, to be honest. Mm-hmm. It's who, who matters. And so I want to give you a few things. By the way, I'm excited because uh, towards the tail half of this episode, who, who matters, a guy that matters to me, my dear friend. I love when people clarify stuff like this. My good friend. This is your dear friend. And, and, and this is a dear friend to me. I've known him for a really long time. Pastor Nick Nilsson is on the pod today. It's He's got a brand new book. Uh, you're going to love him. He's f- sensational, an c- incredible leader. He's going to be on the pod here in just a moment, so we're going to jump over to him, but I want to share a few thoughts on this. Number one, it's not what being said that matters as much as who is saying it. That's right. It's, it's, it's kind of like, um, you know, what's being said is very important, but... Who is saying it matters 10 times more. Mm. So if I say to you uh, something that's encouraging or I validate you or I say, wow, you know, like I'm proud of you. That doesn't matter to you, April, as much as if it comes from your father. Mm. You know, because it's not what is being said is who the source, Mm. the author of it. And I think, you know, it's always important to recognize who you are in people's lives. Mm -hmm. Because if you understand who you are, then you understand what you're saying holds weight. That's right. What you're saying. Re- and, and so I think if you understand who you are, you measure your words a little bit more carefully. Mm. You measure out the weight and the authority of your words because you understand a comment from me could go very far. A passing, uh, a flippant comment could really affect somebody. Yeah. And so because it's not about what's being said, it's about who's saying it. Mm. And if... because. Because you have to think everything that you're saying is being it's being cut up in sound bites in people's heads. That's right. And I remember they said that. And that one time they said this. And, they, and so, you know, for me, the longer I try and get better at leadership, the more I try and restrain my words. Really good. Yeah, that's good. You know, there's a great proverb that says, in the multitude of words, sin is not lacking. And let's contrast that with a different proverb that says, even a fool looks wise when he is silent. That's right. So even if I'm the dumbest dude in the room, if I'm quiet, I'm perceived as wise. And if I measure out my words and I make them count, you know, um, to me, all of leadership is about being deliberate, being intentional, um, using seed language. Um, What am I deliberate with? I'm very deliberate with my time, treasure, and talent. I assign those things. Your words should be the same. And so always remember in leadership, it's not, it's not what is being said that matters. It's who's saying it. And so, you know, um, if you're the messenger and you represent somebody, 
you need to represent them well because who's saying it is even more has more authority than you. Yep. But if you if you go to give compliments, you try and you know encourage somebody, always make sure you have a good. I think one of the greatest things that's lacking for most leaders is self awareness. Mm. Just not being aware of their power, being aware of their influence, being aware of of how they're coming across, how they're being perceived. Mm. Uh, recently, Julie and I were um, in a social setting where um, we watched this one leader just get on their phone. There's a group of people sitting down, get on their phone, check out for maybe an hour, just on the phone. And when we left, Julia was really frustrated with this person. Like, do you, why, why, why do you think they did that? You know, what, what do you think that was? And I said, um, you know, maybe they were exhausted. Maybe they're tired. I'm trying to give them the right, benefit, benefit of the doubt. Nevertheless, her impression was, that's not good. That's not right. Maybe you're not aware. I was almost thinking about it. Maybe the person could have done better for themselves socially if they would have just said, hey, guys, um, I'm going through a lot or, hey, I got to sort some things. Like, I'm always trying to, like, if I'm on my phone, I want people to know why. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Hey, guys, I'm so sorry. Just, I got to sort about four or five things. Uh, you know, I got to get to my my kids right now or did it, um, give me five, ten minutes. I'll be right back. I always think that's a sign of respect because mm-hmm. totally. I know who I am. And if I just check out, people are taking those mental notes. Yeah, that's right. So always remember, it's not about what is being said. Mm. Go to the source. Who said it? That's why whenever I hear like, you know, like gossip or toxicity or comments, I'm always going, okay, so who said that? Right. Mm-hmm. Tell me who said that. But because everybody said because it, it matters. Yep. That's right. It just matters. Who is saying it matters. The second thing that I want to encourage you with, it's not what you're doing that matters. It's who you're doing it with. Mm. And that to me is exciting. It's like, it's the whole thing about mentors or influences. I, I choose my influences. My influences don't choose me. I choose who gets proximity in my life. Yeah. I choose who I'm going to have in my home. Mm-hmm. I choose who I'm going to vacation with because I know that who I choose is a reflection of who I am. That's right. And so I think that you have to be a little bit more deliberate on not just letting anybody have access to you. I know I'm getting into kind of like, I want to be careful here because there's a, there's a spirit that um, I think is very important for us to understand. Don't throw your pearls before swine. What is the context of that? I can't just let everybody be at my house and everybody be in my space and sure. everybody. I'm not trying to overvaluate myself. I'm just trying to really understand that who matters mm-hmm. yep. and who I choose, who who I have compassion for, who I have interest in, who I feel called to, you know, invest into, who I'm developing, who who matters. And I think that if you're not careful, you just accept any Joe Schmo. You just go, well, they showed interest, and so I. No, no, no. No, no, it's not what you're doing. That matters more than who you're doing it with. Who comes alongside you? Who do you, because the people you're rolling with, that's your that's a cosign. That's right, a that's right. that's an endorsement. Yep. That you know, half of people's lives are being blessed because they're with you. Mm. Mm. It's really good. Half of the doors that open for people is because they're with you. And if they weren't with you, they would have never met so and so. And if they weren't with you, they wouldn't have gone that far. I know that because that's my whole life. Right. I know how good I am. I'm not that good. But because I was with them, they thought, oh, he's good. Yep. Oh, he's really yep. talented. Oh, he's and that that's the game changer is relationship. Your alignment determines your assignment. And so because of how influential you are, come on, leader, you're influential. You're a leader. You've got favor. You've got opportunity you've got come on you're a leader and so it's not about what you're doing i would sit down if i were you and i would make a list in this season of my life who do i really feel called to invest into and to raise up who who should i be developing who's like a joshua in my life who's like a timothy in my life who's somebody that 
you know, like everybody else wrote off, but I see gold. Mm -hmm. That's so much of leadership, by the way, is just going like, as long as I can calculate the risk I'm willing to take because I feel like I have a burden to really help so-and-so get from A to B, and I really have a heart to make sure that my ceiling is their floor, mm. then then I'm fine with it because it's about the who. Yeah. And who I love and believe in is not who you love and believe in. Right. They're just, they're different spheres. They're different burdens. They're different callings. And so remember, it's not about what you're doing. What you're doing is kind of like second. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Who you're doing it with, that's always first. That's really good. So we always say, what, 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 what is the great saying? What is the old saying? Right people, right place, right time. Where does it start? People. Hmm. It's always it's about really the people. It's always about the group. It's always about the team. It's not about the goal. It's not about the objective. It's not about the strategy. It's not about the system. It's about the person. Who you're doing things with matters more than what you're doing. And the last one, number three, we're going to get to Nick Nelson. Well, you're going to love this. It's not what others think about me that matters. It's what I think about me that matters. So who, in this case, who matters? Who matters the most is me. I matter. And this is, I want to be very in context here because Jesus said this, love your neighbor as yourself. That's right. I cannot love others or the team until I first love me. Uh -huh. I have to take a priority in my life, my health, my, my, my mental health, my finances, my sleep, my exercise. Why do I take priority? Because I'm no good as a leader mm. until, so it's like, oh yeah, who, who said that? And who, who I'm doing it with, but it's like the biggest who in leadership is you. That's right. The greatest investment really you will good. ever make in your life is investing into yourself. That's right. Making it. Why do you listen to podcasts? You're investing into you. Why do you listen to audio books or read books? I'm investing into you. Why do you take a vacation? It's an investment into me. Yep. Why do I go to bed early? I'm investing into my mental health. Mm. Why do I, you know, spend money on an Orange Theory Fitness membership or have a hobby or fill in the blank? You, I, let, let me convince you today. The greatest investment you will ever make is not Tesla stock. It's not Apple stock. These are great investments, by the way. <laughs> you know, so is PayPal, so is Disney. It's controversial, but it's a good investment. The greatest investment you'll ever make is investing into you. That's right. Just going like, I believe in my future. So it's like, buy that conference ticket. Get on that airplane. You know, uh, uh, sit down on that YouTube and, and, and research things. Because if you get better, oh, come on, Greg, Craig Rochelle. That's another button. Yep. We, we, did, need... we did have a Craig. What was his? Did we have a Craig? No. The um, yeah, yeah, we did. It was... Um, Leadership rises and fall. No. I'm sorry. No. That's you never had a Craig one. I would have remembered it. Mm, I thought we did. I'm just advocating we'll for, for for the great. It's got two the empty buttons. The great Craig yeah. Rochelle. The, I mean, come on. Who's a better leader in the world? Honestly, let's go. Than Craig. His famous line. When the leader gets better, everybody gets better. So who matters the most? It's kind of like when the airplane's going down, what is the first thing they instruct you? You better take care of you yep. so that you can go take care of others. That is the fundamental principle of leadership. That if I really love them, I will always invest into me. Because a greater investment into me, if I get better, everybody gets better. Mm -hmm. That's why I really try and in my, my annual calendar have a few trips that I know I'm going to walk away yep. with a thought, a, a relationship, a moment, an impartation. I'm going to be changed from this. And because I'm changed, the ripple effect is crazy. You need to, you need to really believe in your ripple effect. Mm. You need to really be convinced of your influence. And I'm not trying to take a census here. And like, I really don't like to stalk like, you know, constantly living in subs and followers and, you know, email right. numbers. And I, you know, every once in a while it's like, okay, you know, once, twice, three times a year, we look at that and how we're doing. And those are, those are good markers. How many people are downloading, how many people are listening to the audio and all that stuff's really good. Not that it should move or sway us. Right. It doesn't change how hard we work because I don't control results. No. You know, it's, it's, it, but it's good to be aware of influence. Yep. It's always good to be able to recognize, oh man, I'm not like, this is part of leadership in my opinion, is just recognizing I'm not like everybody else. Mm. I'm not. I'm a leader. 
So I can't live like everybody else or talk like everybody else or spend like everybody else because I came under great responsibility. So the requirement for my life is just, I lost the right to do so much. Mm. I don't have the right to act like a child and I don't have the right to be divisive. I don't have the right to share my feelings mm. on the worldwide internet. And I don't have the, I don't have the right. Why? Cause I have responsibility and with great responsibility comes great requirement. Mm. And the more I understand that I, what flowing out of my life is a massive deal. I will invest more into me. If I don't believe in That's me, right. if I do not think of myself as a leader and see myself that way, the greatest matter is you. And so, Nothing breaks my heart more than when a leader can't see themselves as who they are. Nothing breaks my heart more than when a leader is like, you know, um, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm good, but like, you know, I'm not like so and so. I'll never be, yeah, yeah, but you know, if if they had this, what would they do with this? Mm. Mm. You know, marveling at the gifts and the talents of others. You know. Um, Part of being a, a, a great leader is um, the way I see myself is is not too high, but it's definitely not too small. I have a moderate, accurate view of myself. That's good. And when I have a moderate, accurate view of myself, I don't, you know, minimize my impact. I don't speak negatively about it. I don't wish it was somebody else's I can just kind of soberly go wow okay that's where it's at right now and we'll see where the future takes us yeah but you know for a long time uh, a, a question that some people around were asking is like how long can you be relevant mm. Mm. you know like how long do you think you can be be relevant and I was always fascinated by that question like Am I relevant? <laughs> Does it matter? <laughs> right. Is that what we're after? Yeah. yeah. Relevancy? I don't know. Like, everyone I, ad I admire had really big moments in their life and probably tons of obscure moments. Mm. Relevancy? I've never even thought about that. Um, influential? Making a great impact? being a voice in people's life, um, being a model and an example, um, leaving a legacy. I've thought about those things. Yeah. yeah. And so I'm going to invest into me. Why? So I can be relevant. <laughs> man, the, the whole, the whole algorithm did, did, did us dirty, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're not even care. Relevancy. <laughs> yeah. If you are relevant, have fun. Right. I just think too, like all of the most iconic things, you know, the really excellent things. They've been the same forever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They don't have to change. They're not worried about being relevant because they're always excellent. They're yeah. classic. They're iconic. They're iconic. That's exactly right. And I think if you think about leadership, every principle is iconic. Mm -hmm. So live by values, live by character, live That's by it. integrity, live by principles, and you'll always be, for your word, iconic. You'll always be a legend. You'll always be what, you know, because it's like, dude, at the end of the day, if you got good things to say, you're going to encourage somebody. Right. Yep. You got good things to say, you're going to help somebody. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You're filled with wisdom. You're going to really, really help somebody out of a tough situation. So my point, going back to the point, is you matter. Mm -hmm. So don't mm -hmm. neglect you. Invest into you. I... I'm very rigid. I live the most boring life you've ever imagined. <laughs> I cannot get over I how boring know. my life is. Know. My life is a, a, a string of boring moments. I just do the same thing. Right. I go to the office. I'm going to stop by the gym on the way home. I'm going to go home. I'm going to eat dinner with my kids. We're going to do baths and books. When they go to bed, I go to bed. I'm going to get up tomorrow morning. Great. I'm going to work all day. It's really good. I'm going to stop by the gym. I'm going to go home. I'm going to have dinner. We're going to do bath and books. When they go to bed, I go to bed. Why? It's an investment in me. Yep. And if I got to deviate from my calendar, I'm actually pretty ticked off because it's something I actually have to go do. Yep. And I got to get a dinner with them and I got to go to this event and I got to go get on an airplane. But like if, if, if I had it my way, I'd keep investing to me. Why do I 
live it with this passion because I know mm. if I am strong and healthy and, 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 and vibrant and full of vision and life, the ripple effect yep. is not even with effort. Mm. It's not even with effort. It just happens. Yep. Wow, you inspired me. Well, that's that's awesome. Thank you for saying that. I'm living pretty inspired. Mm. Does that make sense? It's like, yeah, as opposed to where it's like you're trying and you're doing this and you're trying to force, and you're trying to post, and you're trying to. You know, it's like, dude, if you really invest into you, it will happen so naturally. Mm-hmm. Everybody will be like, wow, yeah, something's gotten into you. I'm not trying to make a ripple. I'm just, no. it's just yeah. happening. Yeah, I'm living. You're living has to be better than your leading. Mm. And if your leading takes precedence over your living, fam, you got a problem. Who matters? You do. Let's go. So I'm back real fast, you know, because we already just ended the episode, but I just got to jump back on, give proper introduction. This guy right here from Houston, Texas, Lakewood Church, under the tutelage, of the great Joel Osteen. Pastor Joel Osteen texted me on Sunday a photo of a guy that goes to Zoe. He went and they took a photo together on Sunday. And I just, when a hero texts you, you just kind of like light up like it's Christmas. <laughs> I love Pastor Joel so much. And Nick Nilsson has served at Lakewood Church for over a decade, faithfully ran the youth, built Hope and Life Conference, has been a friend to me. And do we, this guy and I, we've hooped together. We, had late night dinners. We've had so many conferences, so many youth meetings, so many, so much church, so much fun together. And this guy is a spark plug. This guy's a, a wall and ball of energy. He's a phenomenal leader with a brand new book. So come on, let's jump in right now to my interview with the great Nick Nelson. <laughs> this is, this I mean, is it. To me, this is as good as it gets. <laughs> The to me, this is as good as it gets. Really? Because you know, some people, you know, if you have some people on, you're kind of like, Hey, how you doing, man? It's good to see you. Tell me about your book. Like, this is my dog. This is my guy right Let's here. Let's go. Bro. The dreamers meeting you the look leaners. Phenomenal. That's right. The dreamers <laughs> meeting the leaners. Put it in the couch. Put it in there. <laughs> you look great. How you doing, I'm man? Fantastic. Houston Heat, bro, though, you just re- it's something Houston else. Houston Heat, but I'm telling you, you <laughs> brought the heat with this new book. Hey, how good does the back of it look? Well. The back cover. Well. Put, show, show everybody. Dude, dude. That, hey, just like the colors, the, the, the pose. Shout out Sarah Sencio. She took it. She made me look good, bro. You need some serious help. You look, you look great. The green, thank you. Appreciate. Got it, it with the hat. Clean. Got it with the hoodie. You know, you know? strong. Trying. We're trying. We're trying. Strong. I'm trying to follow you. Follow your lead. You know what I mean? You blaze trails bro, that those of us stop. behind you can just follow. Um, you're following a greater man, and his name is Joel Olstein. Let's just go on record and get it straight here, so everybody can recognize. <laughs> Real recognize real. Okay. The OG. Man, tell tell me about how did how did the idea for this book start? You know, I feel like it's been a long time coming, developing in me, and I've always felt like I was at some point gonna do a book, but just trying to figure out when the right time was gonna be. And honestly, right. I just felt like beginning of twenty twenty one, got the green light, felt compelled by God to do it, felt excited about it. This idea kind of came up within me in January. And uh, as you know, if you call me and I haven't seen you in a while, talked to you in a while, Nick, how you doing? I'm like, I'm living the dream. I'm living the dream. And to me, it's a, it. it's, doesn't mean I'm, I'm, I don't have problems. I don't have challenges. I don't face things that are tough. I'm not navigating through pressures and stuff. It's I'm, I'm just choosing to have a certain perspective of those things. And... Mm. As I started to think about what was in me and how I carry myself, what I've lived through, what I've walked through, things I've learned, I've come to realize that perspective is paramount to us becoming everything God's designed us to become, to live the life he's designed for us to live. It's, it derives around your perspective. How am I going to perceive wow. what's happening to me 
How am I going to view my finances, my career, my marriage, my relationships, my space of influence? So that all just kind of came bold out. And it's like a flip on the cultural cliche, right? Like Instagram, living the dream, right? I'm on a yacht, living the dream. I'm I'm at the corner office, living the dream. I have the clothes I want, you know, but I just felt like, you know what? You don't have to wait to experience what wow. those things can provide in a moment. You don't have to wait mm. for, to experience those things until you arrive there. You can experience wow. them right now with the change of wow. with the change of perspective. And the book kind of leads you into how to do that in practical ways. So when you hear the title, you kind of think, oh, is this just all good and you know, it's it's really about how to navigate through challenges, how to navigate wow. pain, how to how to see things through a different lens of faith. Um, so yeah, so I'm like, wow. let's flip this cultural cliche on its head. Let's, I love let's that. not, like, let's tell people, hey, you don't have to limit the dream to a destination or a, a wow. place of arrival. You can, you can live in peace, joy, satisfaction, contentment now. So. So good. And you know, me. to me, I mean, what, yeah, one of the things that, that, that I've always loved about you and really admired and respected about you is <clears throat> you have a positive outlook. You're a, you're a very upbeat, joyful person. You add value to others. Um, you're just a, a force of, of good, a force of helping, serving, loving. I, I've only seen you encourage people. I've only seen you come alongside people to help them. How, how do you, how do I develop more of that? If I'm a leader, mm. The dreamers and the leaners hey, getting together. Hey, hey. If I'm a leader today and I'm 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 going, I want to be like that. I would love to be known as a person that does that. What are what are, like what are some mindsets that you've had to like resolve? To, yeah. to to live the way you live. Yeah. Well, I've I've tried to always maintain a perspective that if God has got me, then that frees me to be about other people. God's got my future. God's God's in control. He's he's already laid out. He's the architect of my life. He knows the steps that are in front of me. The chapters are already written. And so for me, I felt like I've tried my best. Of course, I've failed and have been, you know, far from perfect in these areas throughout my journey, but I've tried to keep this perspective that if I can be about God and his kingdom and serve other people and push them higher and empower them and encourage, I, I, I do that freely because I know God's got me. I know he's taking care of me. I know That's he right. will open the doors for me. I know he'll put me at the tables I need to be at. He is going to bring the right people into my life. And so it's, it's freed me then to be about other people. It's freed me to be about, um, helping others, lifting others, encouraging others, inspiring other people, because wow. I look to God to be my source of those things. Does that mm. make sense? Yeah, so good. Okay. Uh, one of the things I've always admired about you as well is like, you know, um, we've known each other a long time. And so when you've known someone for a long time, you've seen all the people come and go. Mm. And the revolving back door. Mm. And I, I think that's part of life. You know, the, the old saying, people come into your life for um, a reason, a season, or a lifetime. Mm. And I know some of your friends that are lifetime with you. I know some people that were clearly there on purpose for a reason. I can think of a few right now. And then I know some people that were with you for a season there in, in Houston and in Lakewood. How have you been able to stay so sweet and positive with so much relational transition. Because I think part of limit, living the dream is that God puts people in your life to live the dream with. Correct. How have you been able to navigate that with such a, a sweet spirit? That's a good question. Again, I feel like the awareness that when the awareness that when you're where you feel like you're in the grace space that God has you, when you're in your lane, going at your pace, I feel right. like you have a great understanding that God's going to bring people in and he's going to bring people out. But if I'm always, if I'm looking at other people as a means for them to make me go to a new level, or I'm always looking to receive versus give, then it it always feels very transactional. But if I'm looking at other people that are coming into my life consistently and going, all right, what can I give them? How can I sow into their Mm. life? 
whether they're here a year, six months, two years, 10 years, I have to see my position in place in their life as some, as a, I got to sow into them. I want to give into yes. them. So when they leave, there isn't this sense of you owe me something, you, right? You, you're, you're, I leave, made like, you, yeah, I gave yeah, you the, exactly. It, it's come on, right? Yeah, um, come on. I, I just, I, that, that's just my perspective is I want to, I want to just help the people that come into our space as best I can and empower them and serve them and love them and elevate them. Um, and I just am again, confident that God will bring the right people in my life for the right seasons. You know, I just feel That's like exactly right. God, God will supply, uh, solutions, the right relationships, divine opportunities. You know, Zacchaeus was short, but God provided a tree for him so that he could oh. be elevated to see Jesus when Jesus came walking towards him. And I just feel like in every season, God will plant a tree in your path that will make up for your deficiencies and your Beautiful. opportunities. And Beautiful. I just think those trees can be relationships. Oftentimes yeah. there are relationships that say, hey, if you're owning a business, wherever you find yourself in your space, when you're stepping out, when you're following God and you often look at your deficiencies and go, oh man, I don't know how I'm gonna make up for this. I'm not good in this. God has a tree for you. Yeah. God has put solutions. Wow ideas, you know, provision in so place good. already. That sycamore tree was planted long before he was ever a thought in his mom and dad's mind. Wow. So true. That God what, would have orchestrated that. Go ahead. I love that. It's very, very powerful, very insightful. I love that's a that's a, a beautiful thought. And I and I and I so believe that. It made me think of that verse. And God will make all grace abound to you so that you at all times in every season, we'll have everything that you need. God, God's gonna, my God, so su supply all Come of on. your needs. Come so on. I just, I love that thought. W what do you say to people that say, <laughs> "Man, you know, Nick, I, I, I want to live the dream right I, now. God. I'm living the nightmare. Like, how, do, how do you <laughs> shift?" <laughs> because I think a lot of people are, are are watching someone like you, and they go, "Well, yeah, you're, you're living the dream." But right now, I'm I'm getting punched in the face. One of my favorite lines yeah. from Bishop Jakes is, currently right now, all of your heroes are being punched in the face. And I wow. think some of us find comfort wow. in that, going like, you yeah. know, it's there is no magic pill. There is no magic life. We all have yep. challenges. 100%. How do I turn my nightmare into the dream? Great. No, it's a great question. I For me, uh, it even goes back to um, what I thought was was the dream for me, which was football. I mean, when I was in high school, all my equity, investment, attention, and focus was there on playing go. football. Senior year of high school, third game in, tear my ACL, played tailback, already verbally committed to play at Michigan State, thought that's what I was gonna do for the rest of my life. I was a young believer and ACL's torn and just thought, man, my world's collapsing. This is the dream. God, this is what I get for like what happened, you know, so many things I was wrestling with God on. Wow. And got surgery, rehab. And during that time away from the field, God did a very unique thing in my life and in my heart wow. where I, I tried my best to keep my eyes on him, believing I had some great people, great voices around me at that time, mm -hmm. great friends saying, hey, God's going to work this out for your good. Mm -hmm. Trust him, trust him. So I just kind of, you know, buckle down and trusted God and just try to keep my perspective on his promise. And through that time, my heart began to shift from football to ministry, from playing wow. football to going after, you know, being a pastor. And I didn't grow up in church, didn't have any framework of what that would really look like, but just the desire grew in me. And long story short, with football, even in, you know, in front of me as an opportunity, I decided to go towards becoming a pastor because I was so excited to do it. I felt so wow. led and compelled to do it. So it was almost as if God allowed it. He didn't cause it, but he allowed it so that he could do the work in me that was necessary to get me to do what I was made to do. Football was what I wanted to do, but, but ministry was what I was made to do. Mm. And so now hindsight, I can thank God and go, had that door not closed, had I not gone through that, I would never be doing what I'm doing now. And I'm experiencing so much more satisfaction 
happiness, contentment, peace, fulfillment, doing what I'm doing. But as a 17 year old kid going through oh. that storm as a young believer, um, I would have never imagined that that pain wow. was, 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 was real, but that pain propelled me into my purpose. And so, so good. now I'm thankful for that closed door. Cause, oh. cause it, cause it led me to a better door that God knew. I love that. Say that line again. What did you say? Um, football is what I love to do, but ministry what I, was what I, what was, I made was made to made do. To do. Wow. Yeah. And I think life is about but, discovering that. Absolutely. So for me, it's, it's taught me to view closed doors differently. It's taught me to have a different perspective on storms, challenges, problems. All right, God, there's something here that that's bigger that you're doing. You're going to work this wow. out for my good somehow. That's your promise. That's what I'm going to focus on. Wow. I, I, faith, faith isn't ignoring the facts, right? Mm. Faith is looking beyond them. So I'm going to, I'm going to look at this diagnosis. I got to look at the books. I got to look at the, the mountain in front of me, but my, my perspective, I got to at some point get beyond that and go, all right, God, this sucks. I don't wish it on anybody, but I'm trusting that you're going to work this out for my good. And honestly, Chad, the book has a lot of those stories of not wow. like triumphant moments, but times in my life and in my wife's life and in our family where we went through some hard stuff. And my wife, even now walking wow. through vertigo, she's had wow. vertigo and physical challenges for eight years. And I talk very transparently about how wow. we wrestle with that, how she chooses, mm. um, what perspective she chooses to carry every day in faith to help her navigate through that. Um, and so, yeah, I f she came, <laughs> I'll share this story with you, Chad. She came into, the, into my room two weeks ago and she said, Nick, I've done everything I know to do. I went to doctors, I've prayed, I've declared, I've done everything I know to do in faith that we know, but I don't, I can't walk around this. I can't keep walking around this same mountain over wow. and over and over again, you know? So she says, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to stand on it. Ooh. She says, I'm going to stand on this thing until God moves it. Wow. And in other words, she said, I'm going to just use this as a platform to tell people Let's go. This, mount, this mountain may not be moving, but I still trust God. Come I still on. believe he's got a great future for me. Come on. I still believe he can and he will move it. He says he'll turn mountains into molehills. So if he does it instantly or over time, this thing's moving. But we but, trust him. But we trust him even in the midst of it. Even if it doesn't move. Wow. I'm going to still give God glory and. That's so good. That's that perspective that I'm talking about. It's it's all perspective. Now, uh, you know, on Leadership Lean In, on this podcast, we talk about John Maxwell quite often. In fact, uh, he has his own little button that we hit, and John Maxwell's voice gets piped in, you know. It's a whole situation. Now, <laughs> Nick... Um, You've got, had some experience with John Maxwell. <laughs> no, this and, is, and this you've, is for the outtakes. You've you've uh, you've been in leadership conferences with John Maxwell. Uh, I, it leads me to my yeah. next question, Nick. Uh, I want to live the dream, but I've got failure in my life. <laughs> I'm, I'm, we're laughing at an inside joke oh. here. You know, a lot of times I think people, what they want to be uh, living the dream, but it's not just the nightmare sometimes. A lot of times it's like, I just, I'm carrying shame. You yeah. know, it's like I got failure. I made some big yeah. mistakes. I have disqualified myself mm. from living mm -hmm. the dream. Talk to me mm. about, and, and talk to us about overcoming failure because I think that's just a big part of it. You know, one of my favorite truths is a righteous man falls seven times. That's what I was just going to say. And still rises. Yep. Talk to me because I think he keeps getting, you might have get, failed, but, up. but you can still step into your dream. That's, yeah. Someone asked me, what do you think leadership is? And for me, I think I, my first response was le leadership is failing and getting up. Leadership is continuously failing and getting up because 
if you're not failing, it, it tells me you're not trying anything new. There you're you not go. expanding yourself. You're there not you going go. into new environments. There you're you not go. exposing yourself to new lessons, new methods, new things that you naturally aren't gravitating towards and doing. So I think I would question the opposite and say, man, if you're not failing <laughs> at stuff right now, yeah. you know, then that, that might be the bigger question. But no, I think it's something we all work out and deal with. I think, um, as you said, following Jesus, fulfilling his plan for your life, living the dream, it's, it's not about being perfect. It's about getting good at getting back up. That's right. When you do make mistakes and go, hey, God's got me. He's qualified me. I think that's that's the principle and the key is not quitting, not giving up. And <laughs> whether I was running a camera as an intern at a John Maxwell conference and <laughs> failed miserably is what Chad was alluding to. Uh, I did something really immature. So if you have, if you've ever done something <laughs> immature as a leader, yeah, I'm I mean, you got to admit it's one of the best I'm stories your, you got. Yeah, yeah, it is. I mean, like in the, your whole repertoire of stories, that's got to be top five. Top 10. Top five. I'm pulling it out. Maybe top three. Yeah, like it's so good. Ministry context, oh, it's top three. It's as good as it gets. <laughs> Do you, yeah, I had to get up from it. Yeah, you got yeah, to gotta bounce from back. That one. I, I had just, to bounce back. I just back. like that I idea, though, and I really like what you're saying because who can't relate with failure? Yeah. You know, who can't relate with, you know, writing a book on all the mistakes I've made? You know, but I think that it's so important that we just address it for a second, because I think when we talk about living the dream, a lot of people go, Joel Olstein, who has the appearance from the outside world of someone that just really has it all together. He is eligible to live the dream. And but I'm not. And I, don't, I just don't think that's true. And I think it's really good what you're saying, because I think just like Joel and just like all of us, we're all trying to just work through life and, and, and become the healthiest, best version of ourselves. Yes. 100%. So, so good. So good. I'm so, so bro, I'm so, I'm so happy for you. I'm so excited to read this book. Yeah. I can't, I hope every leaner and every dreamer reads the book. We need some leaner dreamer merch. Let's go. Let's go. Collab. Collab. We need a collab. We need a, we need a fall Leaner winter X collaboration. Dreamer. It's a whole thing. It's a whole thing. It's in green. That green is fire, bro. That's very yeah, green. Well, it's so hot, bro. <laughs> well, everybody, <laughs> check out this new book. It's everywhere. I mean, it's everywhere, right? Yep. Everywhere books are sold. Everywhere 100%. books are sto- sold. Amazon, Chad's trunk. <laughs> uh, just hustle everywhere, it for me, bro. Bro, uh, love you, appreciate you. Uh, love you you've more. Never, never change. You've been the same person since the day. I think you've been the same person since that kid that got hurt his senior year. I'm just convinced mm. you have. Mm. You've only grown. You have not changed, and that's why you're special, mm. and that's why God mm. has blessed you the way that He has. So, thank you for thank being you, the leader that you are. We're leaning in. We're learning. We want to live the dream. We love you, bro. Thanks for Let's thanks go. for stopping by.